Hello, welcome back to another video by Project Study Buddies. Today we're going to talk about nervous system, in particular chemical synapse. If you haven't, click the subscribe button and like this video to ensure that you said you are updated on our newest videos. So the junction between two neurons is actually known as a synapse and we can see a presynaptic membrane based on this diagram and a postsynaptic membrane. And between these we see the synaptic cleft. So what happens when an impulse is passed through? When an impulse travels down the axon terminal, it stimulates the synaptic vesicle to fuse with the membrane, presynaptic membrane to release its contents known as the neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are known as these chemical signals in our brain that carries information. And these chemical signals will diffuse across the synaptic cleft and binds to specific receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. To take a more in-depth look into this, what happens is that when an impulse arrives at the end of the presynaptic neuron, the vesicle moves towards and fuse with the presynaptic membrane. This releases all these neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. It diffuses down the concentration gradient. So it doesn't require energy. And it's just simple diffusion. And we know that a neurotransmitter has a specific shape together with the receptor. So it will bind to the receptor of that matches of complementary shape. So what you see is that if I have a square neurotransmitter right now, it will not bind to this specific receptor, meaning there will be no electrical impulses produced later. So since we have this similar specific shape where the neurotransmitter binds to the receptors, what happens is that this triggers an impulse which travels along the postsynaptic neuron. But what happens to the neurotransmitter. This is stay there forever that continues to stimulate us all the time. So it can't stay there forever, right? So what happens is that it will be recycled and destroyed. So the excess neurotransmitters, as you can see, will be either recycled or destroyed. Now what happens if we take drugs? If we misuse drugs, what happens to our nervous system? See, in the brain, there are a lot of different chemical neurotransmitters. You have dopamine, you have serotonin, GABA, glutamate, and a lot more. That transfers nerve impulses across synapse. And these neurotransmitters actually diffuses across the synapse and fit into specific receptor molecules, as we mentioned just now. So what about heroin? Why do we feel happy and feel this reduced sensations of pain and elevated mood when we take in heroin. What happens is that we talked about specific shapes of receptor molecules and the neurotransmitters. This occurs because in our body, we have naturally occurring endorphins. This endorphins actually reduces our sensation of pain, affect mood, and reduce the sensation of hunger and thirst. But the thing is, morphine and natural endorphin has a somewhat similar shape. So it binds to the same endorphin receptors. In a way, you can say that morphine is an agonist. So morphine essentially has the same effect on the body as do endorphins. If we take a look at it, an endorphins definition, we can see that it is a combination of endogenous and morphine. Endogenous means within our body, and morphine means an opiate pain reliever. So if we look at this, when we take in heroin, when it reaches our brain, it is metabolized into morphine. And this morphine will bind to endorphin receptors. So taking heroin essentially makes us feel great because it binds to our receptor molecules that makes us feel amazing. We know that taking heroin can reduce the production of natural endorphins and other neurotransmitter, which is why we become more dependent on heroin when we start taking it. And this will lead to a need for greater and greater amounts in order to feel the same feeling. This is the same as cocaine. So lesson of the day, don't take drugs unless it is prescribed to you by your practitioner. Thank you.